Oh, baby, it's time to talk some Gophers football. We're giving you insights from the spring practice and are the Gophers already catching the injury bug? We'll dive in today. You are no locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden out, Gophers. However it turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. is up y'all you are listening to lockdown golden gophers part of the lockdown podcast network your team every day my name is kane rob host of the podcast former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk golden gophers with you each and every day of the week monday through friday today we're talking about spring practice early thoughts we saw the second practice live and in person and i have some notes some takeaways from that practice some things not to overreact to but at least to keep in mind what questions do we still have moving forward through the spring and also what are the hurdles the Gophers are going to have to overcome in 2024. Now first off, shout out to all of the Dinkytown athletes members that were at the practice and that support these players and the foundation and helping get these athletes uh, paid for their work and their what they do, but also to be a part of this program and get to have that one-on-one engagement and interactions. And I just love the work that Dinkytown Athletes is doing. So shout out to all them. Shout out to Geo. I met you at the practice. Good time talking to you. I appreciate you for being a listener and chatting it up with me a bit there as well. But definitely, if you ever see me around at some of the practices, feel free to chat it up, say hi, love meeting the listeners, love talking golden gophers obviously so today we are going to talk about my notes from that practice some takeaways you know i've been in on that offensive line defensive line and how that's looking we're going to talk about the insights there but the number one thing that stood out to me right away was that there were a lot of players not practicing due to injury now a lot of those players are coming back from off-season cleanup is what coach flex said but the players out in saturday's practice include christian driver transfer in aiden gooseby daniel jackson devin williams rowan zolman Jack Henderson, Cade Osterman, Marcus Major, Fame Ijaboy, Jackson Powers, Jameson Gears, I think. I never really saw him on the field. And then Sam Macy, that's just a handful of them. You also had some non-contacts out there with Darius Green, Justin Wally, and a few others. So overall, there are a lot of gophers that are coming back from being banged up or currently banged up. Now, Coach Fleck was asked after the practice. Are any of those practices long or any of those injuries long term or something to worry about? And he said, no. Now, if we're being honest and we what we've learned from Coach Fleck in his time here with Minnesota is that he is not going to tell us if they were a big or long term, regardless of if they were or weren't. So you got to take it with a grain of salt. But it did seem like a number of those guys were kind of stretching and warming up still getting through different things here and there. So I wouldn't be extremely worried about these injuries, especially being early on in the spring. Hopefully some of these guys can work back into the later parts of spring, but there are only 15 practices in this window and the Gophers are going to need each and every one of them. So overall, that's kind of what things looked like from the injury perspective. But during this practice, we saw two players go down, and that was more concerning to me than the ones who were kind of just sitting out limited. Nobody was in boots. Nobody was in, uh, you know, uh, crutches or anything like that. Scooters. We've seen all that before, and we didn't see that in this one. But we did see two players go down with injuries in these practices, and both of them looked like they could have the potential to be serious, but we don't quite know what it was now. The first is starting offensive lineman, Tyler Cooper. Now that is not something you want to hear because he was the best pass blocker for the Gophers in the 2023 season. And he had to be helped off the field by a teammate. And I believe, I don't know if it was a trainer or a strength coach or what have you, but there were two players basically lifting and helping him off of the field. He got looked at by a number of trainers and then he was gone for the rest of the practice. And that happened about halfway through this practice. So hopefully it's nothing too serious, but it didn't look good. 
Then later in that same practice, wide receiver and depth player coming in transfer Jalen Varner. He came in from a D2 school, was injured in what looked to be a left arm injury. Now, it looked like he had to be splinted up. It looked like he was in a lot of pain with multiple trainers, again, working with him. And it happened in the middle of the field. So, again, both of those looking more concerning than something you just kind of rub off or give a few days of extra rest. I'm hoping it's nothing serious, but those were the biggest concerns I had from this takeaway or taken away from this practice. Now in this practice, like I said, my main focus was looking at the trenches and how the Gophers were looking on both sides of the ball there. And we just did a show on offensive line and how I was thinking that could maybe shape out into the spring or like where things could compete. I kept talking about Ash and Beers maybe being at the center. I talked about Martez Lewis not necessarily having that right guard or a starting spot locked in, but he would have to earn it. I talked about Greg Johnson probably being a guy they want to find a way to get on the field in a starting capacity capacity. And all of that kind of played out, not exactly the way I was thinking, but it played out to some capacity. Now, prior to the injury of Tyler Cooper, you saw Ariante Ursary at the left tackle. Now, if there is one position that is locked in, cemented in, and I wouldn't think anything other than that one player playing it, it's Ariante at the left tackle. So that one we knew. But then Tyler Cooper was at left guard. He was there for a lot of last season. Center was Greg Johnson. Now, Greg Johnson was playing at the guard position in his moments of time last year, but in order to get him on the field and get him starting, taking on the center position is a good way to get him in there from the jump. And I, it, it, he's a grinder. We know this. We saw this as a true freshman coming in as an early enrollee. He grinds. He pushes. He always has high expectations for himself, and he wants to give his everything to the team. So him stepping into the center position and doing everything he can to take it and then some, I'm not surprised that Greg was willing to do that and also do it to the best of his ability. I think he could definitely succeed at that position. Do I think he will be the long-term center for the Gophers moving forward? I don't know. I'm not sure if that's a position that he wants to be in for his whole career, but I think if it comes to this is how I start the entire year this season until some of these seniors go away, and this is how I can contribute, and this is how I can be a part of winning football right away, I think Greg would take that in a heartbeat and no questions asked. Now, next to him, we had Quinn Carroll lined up at right guard. We talked about this time and time again last season. We In the season before that, that we thought Quinn Carroll was better served to play the guard position, better in the run blocking, pass blocking is not as much of a strength of his and how he would do a lot better as a guard. Now it looked like Minnesota was going to use him as a guard prior to the beginning of last year, the entire fall camp he was practicing in at right guard. Martez Lewis out there at the right tackle. Then all of a sudden, game one, we see Martez Lewis kicked in the right guard and Quinn back at the right tackle that we saw him at in 2022. So we'll see if this is all for show or if the Gophers can actually get him in there as a guard for his final year of eligibility. But then finally, with the ones, we had Martez Lewis at right tackle. Now, like I said, we saw that again last year, but then all of a sudden it flipped right before the game started to happen. So I don't know if that was lack of trust on Martez Lewis being able to step in at that right tackle position or what have you, but it sounds like Coach Fleck has liked a lot of how Martez has come along, and uh, some of the twos behind these guys are stepping up and really intriguing some of the Gopher staff, so some names to be aware of were coming in behind them. First off, with that Tyler Cooper injury, the first two players that kind of each stepped up into the left guard spot with those ones was Ashton Beers and Cade McConnell. Now, both of these players that were players that I mentioned could step into the center position, and both of these players saw center snaps in that practice as well. So there's a lot of versatility between the interior offensive linemen with this gopher squad. Cade McConnell, Ashton Beers, definitely names to be aware of for both this year. Maybe they're the first guy up in case of injury or anything like that, but then also next year potentially being able to be starters in the future so those are names that you shouldn't be too shocked by we brought them up over the last few weeks but the twos with the offensive line was spencer alvarez at the left tackle sometimes nathan roy but usually alvarez tony nelson at the left guard ashton beers at the center Cade mcconnell at the right guard and philip daniel a name you should know Redshirt freshman has been impressing at the right tackle position and was with the twos for the entire 
practice. So overall, only four Gophers saw time taking snaps at the center position, which was a big question we had coming in. Greg Johnson fully with the ones, Ashton Beers with the twos, and then McConnell and Jerome Williams each with the Rofer groups. So that's how the offensive line was shaking up, but it seems like everything had aligned to kind of what we were preaching and predicting heading into this spring session. Now, that being said, like I said, Greg could play center all of this year, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's where he stays in 2025. One strength for Minnesota is their interior line, and it seems like there's a lot of versatility across the board, so that's good. Flipping to the defensive side of ball, the D-line is an, a group that I am most nervous for, especially the interior D-line. Now, we saw Jalen Logan Redding strictly in that interior spot. I brought that up earlier last week, I believe, and that's what we saw in these first practices. We'll see if that continues. Now, Devin Eastern was playing on both of the interior defensive positions. It sounds like Coach Heatherman wants everybody to have that versatility when it comes to being on the interior, not just a three tech, not just a nose guard or, or a nose tackle or one tech, but being able to shift and attack from different approaches. So that sounds like an important thing for Coach Heatherman. Richter was real working in there as well. And then I'm not sure if Martin Mowusu or Theron Randall is ready for the ones and two snaps quite yet, but they are definitely progressing, which I like to see in this practice. Now, now, Minnesota likely needs to add someone in this room, someone with high motor, someone with upside, and that will be a transfer target in the upcoming uh, window. Now, a few more things I want to bring up is Max Brosmer at the quarterback position definitely saw the read, has the reads, was getting through the reads, has the talent, but I think that in practice number two so far with a new playbook plus a headset communication, which is new for everybody in college football, plus a faster speed. There were definitely some hiccups throughout this practice. Now that said, before you can truly uh, start judging, he's going to need some more time to get into it, but you should definitely see the flashes. You see the reads getting through and across the field. And that is a positive for this quarterback room. You also can see his leadership. You can see his presence with his teammates already. And he was voted a captain by his teammates after only being with the program for two months. Drake Lindsay quarterback definitely showed he has the tools. He has the touch passes. He can take the shots and he's also very much adjusting to the speed though. He doesn't look lost. If he is an extremely hard worker and he picks things up fast, I wouldn't be surprised. Even if the Gophers bring in a quarterback in the transfer window, I wouldn't be surprised to see him push to still command that number two quarterback job and the first shot at starting next season. Now there are some things that we'll dive into tomorrow as well with these spring thoughts of uh, defensive backs, linebackers, and wide receiver thoughts. We're going to cover all that tomorrow, but the last thing I want to talk about was the running back room because the running back room is the strongest room, in my opinion, on the offense from top to bottom. Now, maybe the offensive line could make a run at that title, but I was impressed by the size from C.A. Bengura, from Marcus Major, and I can see all four of those players could handle the majority of the reps if they need to. Darius Taylor, Jordan Newbin, and then those two transfers in. Now, Coach Fleck was asked in the presser afterwards if he would have any hesitation giving a single running back 30 plus touches a game and he had a very strong answer now many fans might not like it but that's what we're going to talk about coming up next along with other questions that still remain First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at Nissan because right now March Madness is in the full thick of it. And right now, March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. Now, each week we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. And just like the all-new 2024 Nissan SUV, these guys were able to make it take it to the next level, and then some. Now, one team that I definitely have to bring up, even though they got knocked out in the second round, the Oakland Golden Grizzlies are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised everyone with a powerful performance in the first round upset against Kentucky and giving their team the biggest win in program history. They say, win life, go Rogue, and that's exactly what the Golden Grizzlies have done here. Now, he also said, uh, their best player also mentioned, we're not a Cinderella and Unfortunately, they weren't a Cinderella because they ended up getting knocked out in the second round, but they had the fight, they had the story, and they definitely won life, just like the go the Rogue over at Nissan. So take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Again, you can do all that by going to shop now over at NissanUSA.com. And while we're at it, let's talk about our friends over at FanDuel because you can say goodbye to the busted brackets. I know there are a few of them out there, especially with Kentucky, Auburn, basically the whole SEC dropping the ball in the 
work into the tournament, but you don't have to worry about that in the busted brackets with FanDuel because whether you're betting on a big upset or the number one seed, it's time to go dancing with America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. So you go out there, you place a $5 bet, you win that bad boy, you get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed, and you can use that on points, spreads, money lines, and so much more, or you can use it all on who you think is going to win the whole darn thing. My vote is Purdue. I'm Big Ten proud right now, but I do think that they are going to be one of the toughest teams to knock out, especially if Zach Eady is in full swing. So visit FanDuel.com. Flash locked on to take a chance today and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. Again, that's fanduel.com slash locked on. All right, Gophers fans, let's talk about the biggest questions remaining for the Gophers. Now, the first one we're going to talk about was, will the running back touches be spread out? Now, this was a question that kind of came up in the presser afterwards. Coach Fleck was asked, would he have any hesitations giving a, a single running back 30 plus touches multiple games? And he said, no, immediately strong, hard, steady, and fast. No, he would have no hesitations. And that's what running backs, part of the reason running backs choose running back is because they want to have the ball in their hands. He doesn't have any hesitations in getting those guys the touches. Now he said in an ideal world, You'd be able to have your running backs go running back one, running back two, running back three, running back four, and work them each into divvied up touches. But that's in an ideal world, and that's not always how it works out. So I think he's kind of saying with the game plans, with how the game is going, with how they want to do things, if one player is really standing up above the rest, if Darius Taylor is running down the throats of people and others aren't carrying the load to the same capacity or to the same efficiency, he will let him run wild. Now that might scare Gophers fans seeing as Darius Taylor was injured last season for a majority of the season. But keep in mind, Darius Taylor also knows he was injured for a majority of the last season, and that's what he has taken a heavy interest in in this offseason is preparing his body, is it preparing what he eats and thinking about how he does it and think about how he works out and taking more seriously with his stretching. He talked about all of this in the presser to open up the season. He's definitely got his head in the game as far as making himself the most available and the most ready he can be heading into his sophomore season. He knows what it takes, and that's why you should be confident that he will take the best care of himself heading into the season. Now, hopefully, the Gophers still find ways to get guys like Marcus Major, C.A. Bengura, Jordan Newbin, awesome touches because because they all are very talented and you can help preserve Darius Taylor for the long stretch of the season and make sure he is being used in areas where the Govers absolutely need him and hopefully can win games down the line. So that was a big question. Many fans might be upset about that answer, but I think it was true to its core. And at least coach Fleck wasn't going to lie to us right there and say, no, yes, I have concerns. I won't run anybody 30 plus carries. And then the first three weeks we see Darius Taylor take it 30 plus times each game. That would be more frustrating than him playing his cards and being straight up and honest with us and telling us, no, he doesn't have worries about it. And he probably will let it happen here and there. Now, the second question we have with the Gophers moving forward is how will this defense come together under coach Corey Heatherman? Now, a lot of people, Coach Flex, some of the players mentioned how Coach Heatherman has really simplified parts of the system. Now, you got to think about Corey Heatherman has the same type of system, same to style of play as jo Coach Joe Rossi. So it's not a complete rebuild. It's not a complete relearning for this defense. They're just tweaking. They're just adding new different flavors and tastes and ingredients here and there, but it's not a complete new slate. So that's definitely something that helps this Gophers team moving forward, especially with a lot of young players that got experience last year, is that it's not a complete relearn, but that you are just changing little elements here and there. And the first thing that they're doing is simplifying things. Now, why would you simplify it? Why would you make it easier on yourself? But the biggest thing is that Coach Heatherman has said he wants this team to play fast. They need to play fast with speed and they need to be violent. Fast and violent are key themes that Coach Heatherman has brought up time and time again since we have been able to talk to him, and that was very present. That's what he wants his team to do, and by simplifying little things in the approach and little things and little asks of what is expected, that allows the Gophers to not think as much, play with more speed, and hopefully create more turnovers. So that's a big part of the defense now. Players at each level seem to love Coach Heatherman, so that's a great thing to see. It seems like the staff is gelling really well. You got to think Coach Heatherman did not bring any other assistant coaches with him. He came to an already existing staff and plugged in, and it seems like it's working out well so far, so hopefully that carries out through the rest of the season. But the defense is going to have a lot to prove this year because defense is huge 
in the Big Ten. Defense wins in the Big Ten. So he can prove that the talented players here are just that. They have the talent and they have the actual backing to them. It wasn't all just Joe Rossi and Joe Rossi magic, but that it was the group of players and the system overall that was helping this team thrive. So hopefully with more aggressive play calling on the defensive end, he can help put Minnesota back on the map defensively and back in good territory and competing in this Big Ten conference. Now, other questions I still have heading through the spring is what is happening in that tight end room? Again, I didn't see much Jameson Gears in this practice. I don't know if he was hurt or what, but Caller worked in here and there. Nathan J- Nathan Jones, excuse me, is a name that you want to keep an eye on. He seemed to be working in. Pierce Walsh was a guy who seemed to get some work, uh, work in there. Uh, so overall, there were some names. There were some guys that I didn't know what to expect there, and it seems like the Gophers are still testing a lot of things, plugging and playing and seeing what works. So overall, it's something to keep an eye on is how that tight end room shakes out, but I do think that there's going to be a lot more wide receiver looks, wide receiver sets, and wide receiver targets in this season than what we've seen in years prior because maybe those Brevin Span fit. I can't even say my own boy's name. Brevin Span Ford targets that we saw from the outside, from the slot, and what have you aren't tight end looks anymore. Maybe they're more wide receiver looks. I would not be surprised by that one. Now, will Minnesota have enough depth? And hearing all those injuries we opened the show with, that is a concern, but it does seem like there's a lot of youth that has some now experience to it. So we'll see how deep this team can go if necessary. And finally, the last question I have for the spring is how quickly can this team put things together? Because there were moments throughout the practice that showed promise, but there were also a lot of sloppy play. And again, this was only practice too. So you can't hold your breath. You can't freak out or overreact or anything like that. But Minnesota is going to have to rally early because they start this year with a very, very tough matchup right away. So we're going to talk about that. What are the hurdles that Minnesota has to overcome in 2024? That's what's coming up here at Locked On Golden Gophers. We're going to dive into that coming up next. First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs, because when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals for the right role. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs, because LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And it's not just another job board. That's the best part about it all. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than 1 billion, with a B, professionals, which makes you the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. And LinkedIn does it all while making the process easy and intuitive. Now, whenever I've had to look for a job, whenever I've even been like, oh, I wonder what's out there. Even when I'm looking for other friends, family members, and they're like, I need a new role. I need something new. I'm like, look, you got to go to LinkedIn here. Tell me what you're good at. Tell me what you're looking for. I'll try to find a few things for you. I always go to LinkedIn Jobs. And that's why you need to be on LinkedIn Jobs because it is a go-to for many people out there. And hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So definitely... LinkedIn knows small businesses and they're always wearing, they know that people in small businesses are always wearing many different hats and they might not have the time or the resources to hire. And that's why LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier and make it a lot more intuitive and quicker. It even has a feature that helps you write job descriptions. And it's why 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post about your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. I go over since we are talking about the hurdles that Minnesota will have to overcome in 2024. And these might seem a little minor and some might seem major, but overall, these are things Minnesota is going to have to overcome in order to have a successful season in the new year. Now, the first one is the defensive coordinator change. Now, we just talked about some of the things that they are doing and tweaking and looking at, but overall, people are going to look and attack and try to expose this defense. So communication is going to be everything. And we know Joe Rossi was really good at making adjustments on the fly. At the halftime, we would see changes and we'd see a vastly different defense, even when they were struggling in the first half. But how does Coach Heatherman do it? How does he do with adjustments? How does he do with the game planning? How does he do to, to bring the added pressures, to bring more turnover opportunities? What does he do 
to make his mark on this defense. That is going to be the first thing that the Gophers are going to have to figure out and also overcome and learn in the beginning of the season and throughout the entirety of this year. So that is the hurdle. Number one is how do they handle this defensive coordinator change? The second one might seem more minor, but it, it does add some complexities to it all is the new headset communication. Now, if you haven't seen over on Twitter, you can check me out at Govers Kane Rob. Uh, both Daniel House and myself asked new quarterback Max Brosmer about how it's been going, getting used to the new headset communication and the plays coming in from there and whatnot, and what are the challenges with it. And he had mentioned just how he had picked coach uh, Luke or Josh McCown, Vikings quarterback coach, the new one. Um, with the headset communication, things to be on the lookout for, things to keep in mind. And they talked about the timing of things and how you only get 15 seconds. And so do, when do you need the play calls out? When? How do you prefer it? Do you prefer the hearing the play come through or do you prefer seeing it from the wristband? Do you prefer getting to the line of scrimmage and letting the coach kind of work with you on things or do you not have enough time for that or do you want to keep it calm, easy head. How do you work in tandem with your coach who is coming through on the headset? There are a lot of little intricacies in those 15 seconds. Now, on top of that, the quarterback has to get the play out, get it communicated, start looking at the protections. There's a ton of it, but if any quarterback seems like they are meant to do that, it is Max Brosmer. He has had a lot of experience. He is able to articulate what he's looking for. He's making calls with the offensive line to call out protections. He's helping his wide receivers. I've seen him coach up with Brevin Spanford and Chris Ottman Bell on routes in a pro day. I've seen him in these practices already talking to different wide receivers and approaching them on how do we look at this route or how do we run this way or what are we going to do here or IDing things with the offensive lineman, he is definitely the quarterback that Minnesota needs for this transition, which is definitely a helpful bonus. But that new headset communication is going to be a challenge for every school across the country, and we'll see how they handle it this year. Now, another hurdle that Minnesota is going to have to overcome, at least from the fans' perspective, is the conservative assumptions and the conservative approach on the offense. Now, a lot of fans are going to have hesitancy and they're going to have negativity because they are going to be like, we're not going to play the win game. We're going to play to lose by the fewest amount of points. And we've seen that firsthand. The Ohio State games game last year was that and then some. It never looked like we were taking any shots. It just looked like we were trying to keep the score as low as possible. But will Minnesota change that approach? If they have a quarterback who can get out there and get after it, if they have the, a healthy running back who can get out there and be a difference maker and a star, when you have that type of talent, can you just go and take a chance? And if you do, even if you don't necessarily win some of those big games, if you don't pull off the upset, but you go out there and you take the swings and you take the chances and you take the shots and you go for it, full throttle, foot to the foot to the ground, Fans will appreciate it. Fans will will admire that. And fans will hopefully still be on the positive swing of things. They'll still be backing you. They'll still at least approve or, approve or appreciate the change that you're showing in your offensive approach. Now, we'll see. That might be wishful thinking if it'll actually happen at all. But if it does with this personnel, that could maybe be the difference to one or two wins for the Gophers favor. So hopefully that conservative assumptions is a, a hurdle we can overcome and get past in this offense. Now, the final two things I want to talk about is the youth that has gained experience this last year, a ton of players, young players played time that they probably weren't expecting to play last year. But now we need those youthful players who have the experience underneath to take a major step into playing in big time plays and being able to be consistent and, and be difference makers that you got to go from, it can't just go from, okay, we have experience. Now we're going to be uh, moderate or rotational players or starters or what have you. No, we need you to go from, we have experience to, I'm going to be a game changer. I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to be in the right spots. I'm going to make big hits. I'm going to get game changing plays. That's how Minnesota goes from having a down year, a negative year to getting back to eight plus wins, even in a tough schedule. So that is going to be a big hurdle to overcome. But then the final question I have a hurdle that the Minnesota needs to overcome and hopefully see more of is how much star power does this roster have? because we still have to see what Max Brosmer can do and how he plays live and how he meshes, though I am very, very hopeful for him. 
We also need to see what star players will step up with Daniel Jackson. We've seen him be a stud on the wide receiver front, but who can step up with him and take the pressure off so people can't double down on him? Also, is there any star power on the defense? I feel like Cody Lindenberg has a ton of potential. Ja Joyner has a ton of potential. They've both shown it at times, but can they be consistent stars? Instead of having a ton of promise, can they be all Big Ten game changer type players night in and night out? That is what Minnesota needs in order to take the next step. And the only stars that I can think of that Minnesota has on a consistent basis is Darius Taylor from what we saw last year, Daniel Jackson from what we've seen for the past two years, and he's been growing more and more into that role. And then finally, Ariante Ursary in his second year last year. I think he's only going to go further in his third year. Those three are star players for Minnesota, plain and simple. But who can step up and be the next star players? We need more than just the three in order to have success in the Big Ten, and that's a big question and a hurdle Minnesota is going to have to overcome. That's going to do it for us here at Locked On Golden Gophers. Now, tomorrow we're going to recap the second-round NIT matchup that the Gophers had with Indiana State. Unfortunately, they lost, and they are done for the season. We'll recap that. We'll talk about the women's basketball team preparing for the NIT, and then also, hopefully, tomorrow or the next day, we will talk about our notes from the defensive backs, linebackers, and the wide receivers from this practice. I'll see you then. Row the boats, Guy Imago Gophers, as always, and don't forget to subscribe.